Bill Ward is an important businessman. He's the managing director of a software company and has a formidable background in engineering. I think one of the things you need to understand about me is that I have done a large number of complicated projects. Some of them have been sort of engineering and electronics, some of them have been software related projects. During the week, he travels around the UK on business, but at the weekend or when he can find the time, his garage provides a safe haven from his busy schedule. I've got a screw cutting metal lathe. Uh, there's a, a wood turning lathe over there. Uh, there's a drill press. Uh, there are any number of drills and routers. We've got a tool to do most things. And it's in this environment that Bill can really get to grips with his lifelong passion for fixing, building and restoring anything he can get his hands on. I have to say that my daughter's experience of life is that if they break something, they just bring the pieces to daddy and he usually fixes it. Oh, Sorry. Hello. Oh, it would help if you plug it in, actually. No, I swear, he's just, he was born with it. I think his father was the same. The cutter has jammed, and so in pulling it out of the hole, I've just disconnected it. So he'll just fix anything. Also, Dad just seems to have a lot of knowledge about everything. Life is about making decisions. If you, if you do make decisions, you'll always end up with a successful solution. And he's always right as well. So with this philosophy in mind, Bill has decided to rejuvenate this classic clinker-built boat by reinventing the wheel. The challenge, if you like, is twofold. One is that definitely the boat needs to be finished and have it in a form of either a motorboat or a sailing boat. And Bill has decided to apply cutting edge technology to make it into an electric river cruiser. It's exactly the sort of challenge I like. I, I like to take on things that are perhaps just, just a little bit risky. And if Bill gets it right, the family will be able to enjoy weekends on the river like never before. <laughs> Bill lives in Camberley, in the heart of the commuter belt. And like most enthusiasts, he keeps his boat in the driveway. How do you do, Good Bill? You. Come to see a man about a boat. He bought the boat 10 years ago for just under a grand, and it's been a slow running project. Finally, he's decided that this is the year for completion. Wow, my goodness, look at this. You've got quite a setup here, Bill. This is a garage, this has never had a car in it. That's how a garage, yeah, what a waste of a good building know, to put a car in a garage, isn't it? And what you, a thing to do. You know what the French say, don't you? What's that? If only the young knew. If only, yeah, if only the old could. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Come through and have a look at the boat. Lovely. Look, look at all this oh, stuff. Oh, here later. she is. She's very chunky looking, but she's got a lot of shape to her. Yeah. I'm quite agreeably surprised, actually. Really? Yeah. The boat has gone through numerous transformations, from sailing to rowing, and now Bill wants to fit an electric engine. Yeah, well, there's some interesting things happened to her, I can see. She's uh, some non-original things immediately. You start to be able to see the uh, course of her life when you're looking at this. Bill's previous work on the boat has involved covering the original wooden hull with thick epoxy, which has formed a fibreglass-like watertight sheath around the hull. I'm also interested in how you've attached this extra bit of keel. I need to crawl under the boat, really, and see... Well, I can tell that, you. that is a very significant thing, OK, that, well, first the way of all, that's attached. The keel itself is a combination of, of, a, of a, a single steel beam that comes down from the forefoot back to the boat. So the keel is bonded to the boat. I mean, basically, Tom, it's engineering. Engineering is the word. It's yeah. a very interesting thing. You know, you're an engineer. I've done a lot of time in boatyards looking at the way boats are built and occasionally even being involved with that. And um, in a sense, some of what's happening here absolutely screams at me. Yeah. And yet, in another way, you're viewing it as an engineer. You're viewing it to use the boat on a canal. Exactly. She's not going to get bounced about at no, sea and stuff of sailing exactly loads. Yep. I think there is every chance that this is going to give you a few years' good use. Oh, I, I have no doubt. However, as often with a project like this, there are a few unanswered questions. Well, the stern tube here, drilled straight, yep. absolute crux of the whole thing. Yep. Stands between the engine and the propeller. If that's not straight, we're in real deep trouble. True. How do you get it straight? Is it straight? It's straight. I started off by drilling a pilot hole with a drill that was about that long. Where'd you get one of those? I made it. In order to fit a prop shaft, which Bill will have to do if he wants to use an engine, the stern tube must be straight as an arrow. Any deviation in the line will disrupt the structure of the boat. 
Well, good for you, because I can tell you that I know proper boat builders who've been who be 20 years' experience, and they, they have to pluck up courage before I, they I drill one of these holes. Well, and yeah. just to make sure, I decided to give it the tried and tested yeah. broom test. The boat and stuff it up the hole. Here we go. <laughs> so far, it seems that Bill's expertise has stood up to the test but there still appear to be a few important parts missing. OK, here's another question for Go on you. Yeah. The actual bronze tube will be put into that. Correct. It'll have a thread on each end and it will... A flange will be pulled up onto the outside of the keel, Correct. the aft face of the outside of the keel. At this end, there would normally be a piece of wood in here, a substantial piece of wood, with this coming up through it, yeah. with a flat face Correct. that you could pull the flange down onto. Now, Correct. There is no sign of anything like that having been done. What is going to happen? It's going to be built around the tube after it's put in. We're going to get the tube in. Sorry, I'm looking a bit baffled here, okay. because you are actually um, seriously breaking the rules now. Don't mind at all. Basically, Bill plans to assemble the complete drive unit first and then work around it, rather than the usual marine method of placing the engine in a pre-prepared watertight setup. But how are you going to make this waterproof? Because normally there's a big piece of wood solid on there, completely batted right. down in white the, lead or mastic and the, bolted through and rock solid. The wood will be rock solid. And when I've got it all in, I'm going to pump it full of, full of sealant. It sounds very plausible when you're telling me about it, and um, I have every reason to believe that you know what you're talking about. I have no doubt that it will work. But there'll be me. boat builders turning in their graves well, when you're talking like that's this. That's for them to do. Yeah, it is, yes. and it's for you to prove them wrong. Well, that's fine. Brilliant. Yes. Bill is certainly thinking out of the box and using his engineering mind to solve the problem of fitting an inboard engine to a once wind-propelled vessel. You're also going to need something uh, to mount the engine on. If I have to make plates to support um, the, the, the uh, pulleys and, yeah. and the thrust bearings and yeah. so forth for the uh, motor, um, they'll almost certainly be laser cut, so I'll draw them uh, on the computer and just email them to someone who will cut them out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, this is shipbuilding. Yeah, I mean, it sounds very casual. I mean, well, it's putting an old boat together with what uh, you've got. Absolutely, but if you look at the sort of the old traditional boat building, it was, you know, very much near enough's good enough, good enough's right, on the basis that nobody can see both sides of a wooden boat at the same time. I knew an old boy who once said to me, I said, that's good enough. He said, good enough is not good enough. Yep, it's got to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And Bill's calculations have to be spot on if he's to make sure that the torque from the motor doesn't rip out the whole shooting match. What we're looking at here is, a, is an engine which is effectively a fat disc, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And, and, and it's trying to go round, yep. and it does go round big time. Yep. And if we've attached it properly, instead of rolling out the boat or just pulling the boat apart, it stays put. So the shaft goes round and the prop goes round. Yep. But the big issue is retaining the twist of that motor, which in engineering terms we call the torque. The whole thing is a torque monster, and we've got to tame it. The whole idea of this project is certainly unusual, to say the least. But Bill seems to know exactly what he wants. It sounds very plausible when you're explaining it to me. I'm entirely convinced by what you say. Intellectually, I can't argue with it. Right. I even am inclined to buy it. But I know there are guys down the road there where I keep my boat who are going to think, God, dear, where do they dig that idea yeah. up from? Because the suggestion will be that we're trying to reinvent a wheel that they've got the answer to long since. What I want to see is this in the water and working... That's fine. ..so that you can prove that you're right. I have no doubt about that. Good for you. And Bill has already been planning the hardware he intends to install in the boat. The motor uses rare earth magnets. It's got a great deal of torque. And the technology has been used in things like um, golf carts, pusher trucks that they use to move trolleys around in supermarket car parks. Oh, those guys with those long trails of trolleys. That's exactly yeah. right, where they yeah. walk beside them. But they're also used by the roboteers to make these fighting robots, you know, the sort of What's things... What's that, that then? Oh, don't tell me, I can imagine. They're, they're, they're... Bill hopes this cutting-edge electric motor will be able to drive a revolutionary propeller. Right. And what we want to do with this is to link that motor technology to this propeller technology. The pitch of this propeller changes according to the power delivered by the motor and, in effect, works like a gear, giving maximum economy to the boat. OK, Bill, well, we've got a high-tech propeller, we've got a powerful little engine, 
We've talked about thrust races. We've even talked about possible reduction to get the speed of the engine down to the speed that this wants. Yeah. It's quite a package. But well, how confident are you that it's really going to work? Absolutely confident. I've had lots of experience of putting together disparate technology and coming up with results that work, and I wouldn't even start the thing if I didn't believe that it was going to happen. Well, it's very exciting. Bill certainly seems to have a watertight plan to get this boat back on the river, even though it's unorthodox. Traditionalists might balk at the way Bill is setting out to tackle some of these issues, but there's always more than one way to skin a cat, quite honestly, and I'm interested to watch the way he's coming at it from a completely offside position, really, from where I'm looking. From what I understand, what's happening here is, uh, is, 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 is nigh on heresy in a wooden boat, but uh, on the other hand, there's no reason why it ain't gonna work that I can see. Yeah, about half a dozen times today, I had the ghostly feeling that there was an old boat builder friend of mine, long departed this life, and he was peering over my shoulder and he was saying, you can't do that, boy. You'll never get away with that. From where I'm looking, it all looks a little bit shaky. The project's good, the boat's lovely, the concepts are sound. It's just this confidence just doesn't ring right with me. But that's a challenge. However, Bill's confidence is well-founded. He has the technical expertise, the right contacts, Good. and the creative thinking to make this work. The question is, will he be able to bring all these things together? The, the project's gained a life of its own, and, and it's a case of keeping a grip on all aspects of the thing so that it goes forward in a steady way. But like all boats, not everything always goes to plan. This is bigger than I had thought it was. So I was given bum information, so I've just spent hours doing something. I mean, that's pathetic. Don't shout at me. 